There is a common misconception uh, uh, that the Hands with Songs was made um, for television. It wasn't. Actually, what happened was that by the end of it, we didn't have enough money to finish it. But we, it was self-financed. We just didn't have enough money to finish it. And so Channel 4, the independent film video people had heard that we'd been on this thing for a year and something, and um, they wanted to see it. So they, they asked if we can show them uh, a rough cut. And I remember exactly the day, you know, because we were still cutting on steam bags, you know, which were these sort of upright movie earlier type machines to film laced. They sat there and they watched it, and um, I, I knew to the second that things had changed for us. Because <laughs> you know, these two guys um, watched it and they said, great, we want it. I mean, it was that instant. And at that point you thought, wow. Now you've got to remember, like, up to that moment, everything that had happened with that film had been something, you know, that we'd struggled for. You know, we've had to beg for cameras, we've had to sort of work uh, in different industries to make money, to go and buy film, to do any more interviewing. You know, it was just, it's been, been quite a bit of work. Um, and it just appeared at that moment that a window of opportunity, shall we say, was about to, hope, to open. So we, we didn't um, turn it down, but we went into it with a certain amount of trepidation. I have to say, because, you know, TV was one of the enemies for us, you know. Um, I mean, it was one of the enemies because we hated its, its amnesiac qualities. We hated the way in which, you know, um, it was without a kind of memory, you know. Uh, so you watch uh, a news item, for example, and the news item from lunchtime or no relation to the one yesterday. <laughs> I mean, even simply put, no newscaster ever says, as I said to you yesterday, <laughs> right, the war in Iran is still going on. It's, it's almost like the very first time. It's, it's a kind of Adamic speech that after a while you think, this is fake, you know. Um, uh, the war in Iraq continues. Yes, but so do you, because <laughs> we heard you, do you know what I mean? That, that sounds like a trite point to make, but it tells you something about the nature of television, which is that it's completely over-invested in the immediate, in the present, at the expense of historical memory. And to the extent that so much of the work we wanted to do was about excavating historical memory and trying to make suggestions between the, how the past and present intersected, it wasn't a great place, <laughs> you know. Um, when it did history programs, they were like, okay, well, that's Henry VIII, and he lived there. Mercifully, that's not our present, because we're here, we don't chop off ladies' heads. You know, all of that, that whole narrative of demarcation between past and present was one that I think most of us were profoundly uh, ambivalent, uh, antagonistic towards. Because so much of what structured who you were as a person of colour, coming of age, in the 70s and 80s, was premised precisely on the connections between the past and the present. And you lived in a space which kept saying, no, 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 don't worry about it, that's all right, we don't, you know, we don't look at you differently, you're like every one of us, but you knew that was bollocks, <laughs> because the facts didn't back it up. You know, if we were the same, then how come we were disproportionately, there were disproportionately more of us in prison, in mental hospitals, out of work, miseducated, blah, blah, blah. What's the connection? <laughs> you know, in a professional liberal democracy which says um, the meritocratic norm was what ruled everything, how come these glaring differences, which coincidentally happened to be differences that could be matched to specific social groups, how come they exist? You know, so for us, the connections between the past and the present were not fanciful connections at all. They needed investigating. Um, but they came, and I think we had to remind ourselves that this was something we'd said. You know, I went to the original independent film um, 
association's meetings in the early 80s, the meetings that fed the report into, not just me, I think all of us did, into the, into the formation of Channel 4. Um, well, not the formation because by 82 it was going, but certainly how it was going to develop and what sort of voices it should represent. So we were certainly involved in that discussion and it just seemed slightly fake to take part in those conversations for something to exist and then not want to be part of it, you know. Um, there was also a whole group of us who had by then set up ourselves as a workshop and there were complex discussions inside a film union which was a strange union at the time because its heads were all left wing but the membership was pretty conservative um, and quite closed uh, and a number of the sort of left members particularly one guy who was a Deputy General Secretary at the time, Roy Lockett, were trying to find ways of opening out the union for some of these alternative voices to come in. And, and he had rightly seen television as a space from which this membership could come. You know. um, so there were discussions which had been going on since the early 80s, and we joined it in 83, 84. Um, and so by the time these guys came to us, the independent film and video people came to us. It just felt like the right thing to do. Again, we'd argued for it at union level. It just felt like, okay, well, you need to, you need to get involved. But it's partly to do with what I was saying earlier. Uh, you know, you have these ambitions, but then you have to, those ambitions, once they migrate into the real world, <laughs> well, not so much the real world, but then into the space of actors, public, figures, uh, it comes with its own dynamic and its own demands and um, that's the tough of course because that's what reality is, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's you and the outside world and you have to find that dialogue. Yeah. I think we did, I'm not sure that um, we would have spent quite as much time as we did in the end in it, uh, but it's, it's difficult to tell when you've had enough of something, you know, habits tend to and cloud your judgment sometimes. You know. uh, it's difficult to tell, but I, you know, on reflection, I suspect um, we should have probably left a couple of years earlier than we did. You know. uh, I, I mean, by leaving, I mean withdraw from it as a, a as a sort of full time occupation. You know, we should have left a, a, a bit more, uh, just a bit earlier.